Being on. We're jumping right into topic number one of the conversation. All eyes will be on on Saban Field, Bryant Denny Stadium this weekend, Bama, Georgia, 6:30 p.m. Central Time kickoff from Tuscaloosa. The SEC on ABC. You got ESPN's College Game Day going to be in the building. Several other stuff going on happening. The first time we will see King and the Boar. Kirby Smart, go at it here. This game, Eli, gives you a college football playoff feel early in the regular season. This game gives you a maybe even an SEC championship game preview early in the season because there's no more divisions now. No more divisions now. This game gives you a Heisman Trophy feel early in the season. You got both quarterbacks, Jalen Milrow, Carson Beck, in the Heisman conversation. This game also gives you an NFL draft feel for next year. Uh, just about the entire league is going to be at this game. Just about every single pro team, Eli, is going to be at this game. So you have a melting pot of things that will be on Saban Field at Bryant Denny this weekend. But the number one thing, Kang and the Boar, Kirby Smart will have their first time meeting. Kirby Smart trying to get the Alabama monkey off his back. One in five all time against Alabama. Those were Nick Saban coach teams. Now you got Keg and the Boar. Can Kirby Smart get the Alabama monkey off his back? Can Georgia get the Alabama monkey off its back as a program? Since 2007, Alabama and Georgia have met 10 times. Georgia 2-8. and eight. So, big matchup here for Kirby Smart. But more than that, this is going to be a game, Eli, for Alabama's coordinators. Nick Sheridan, Kane Womack. There's a reason why both of these two were hired to Tuscaloosa. And it's for games like this. It's for matchups like this. Both guys have a chance to earn that paycheck against Georgia. What will they do to offset the Bulldogs in Tuscaloosa? What will Nick Sheridan do? What will Kane Womack do? Starting this off with Nick Sheridan here as the offensive coordinator, this is a game where can he be very creative? How creative can Sheridan be in this game, right? We've seen the best. Offensive coordinators for Alabama go against Georgia. We saw in 2008 what Jim McElwain was able to do between the Hatches and Athens. You got the 41-30 win there. We saw what Lane Kiffin was able to do 2015 in the monsoon of rain, Sanford Stadium with an Alabama offense. We saw what you know, Brian Dable was able to do in the second half that national championship game against Georgia. We saw what, you know, Mike Knoxley was able to do 2018 SEC championship game against Georgia. We saw what Steve Sarkeesian was able to well, see Sarkeesian, well, we saw what Steve Sarkeesian was able to do for 2020 matchup, COVID year in Tuscaloosa. Final score ended up being 41-24, if I'm not mistaken, there. And even though people kind of, you know, this guy was okay, we saw what Tommy Reese was able to provide last year in the SEC Championship. But here's the thing. What does Nick Sheridan do? How creative can he be, right? Because you're entering a matchup where – Georgia's got some guys banged up on defense. They're hoping that they can have these guys on the field for Saturday. We have an idea, Eli, that Georgia's going to want to take away Ryan Williams. They're going to want to do that, whether it's through being physical with him at the line of scrimmage, press man coverage there, trying to jam him up there, whether it's bracketing him with different coverage looks, whether it's rolling the coverage over to his side, Georgia's going to look to take away Ryan Williams, which 
If the dogs are successful in that right, how does Nick Sheridan create for Kendrick Law? Like, this could be a really good game, big game for K-Law. But how does Nick Sheridan create for K-Law? How does Sheridan create for Jeremy Bernard? How does Sheridan create for Kobe Prentice? Right? How does Sheridan also create for the run game? You got to think about that, too. Because Jim Miller had the hot hand against Wisconsin, but I believe this week Justice Haynes has got something to say. Justice from Georgia, went to high school, Buford High School in Georgia. His father, Georgia Legacy, Justice knows the magnitude of this game. So I feel like he is going to get those opportunities on Saturday but how creative will Nick Sheridan be in the play calling to offset Georgia's defense and to get Alabama's offense off to a fast start? Because Georgia's offense wants to get you death by a thousand cuts. They don't necessarily have the big explosive playmakers. There's no more Brock Bowers, no more Lat McConkey. You, you don't have the big explosive playmakers. So George is going to try to nickel and dime you down the field, 10, 12, 15 play drives to slow the game down and play at a slow pace. What George would like to do is play at the same pace that Michigan played Alabama at in the Rose Bowl last year. That pace. That's the pace George is looking for, right? How does Nick Sheridan in this football game, creativity-wise, Get Bama off to a fast start on Georgia. But when you look at Kane Womack, the question is, how much pressure does he apply on Georgia's offense? Georgia not going to have all SEC right guard from last year, Tate Ratledge. He's out because of a tightrope surgery done on his left ankle. I think there's also another offensive lineman for Georgia that may not play in this game. So when you look at Alabama's defense, when you look at Kane Womack, who mentioned over the bye week, Alabama has not used a lot of its defense, only a small volume. So there is some stuff getting ready to be pulled out here. But how much pressure does Womack apply to Carson Beck to affect him? creating takeaways, as well as this 4-2-5 defense, this swarm D stopping the run here, handling your assignment, executing gap integrity, gap discipline, doing that as well. So Nick Sheridan, Kane Womack, how do you earn that paycheck this week against Georgia? I think the big thing for Kang and DeBoer is, I wouldn't call it Eli necessarily pressure. For Kang and DeBoer in this matchup, it's Alabama fans love being reassured. You can assure the Alabama nation so many times, but they want it one more time. Did Greg Byrne make the right hire? Did Greg Byrne get the right guy to come on the plane to Tuscaloosa be the successor to Nick Saban? Was the right move made? I feel like a win for Kang and the Boar over Kirby Smart. Bama Nation can do like that movie waiting to exhale and being like, Phew. Greg Byrne got it right. Greg Byrne made the right hire. Kang and DeBoer was much needed to be the man to take over for this Alabama football program. I think that's the big thing. The reassurance to Bama fans, this was the right hire. But all eyes will be on Tuscaloosa Saturday. Bama, Georgia, Sabinfield, Bryant-Denny. This is going to be outstanding. (laughs) 